either the top edge of your blanket or the bottom edge of your blanket because those stitches that you need to pick up they will be clearer than mm. on the side on the side you'll have one kind of straight vertical line and then one diagonal line and then another straight one so it's it's a little bit more tricky to see where to pick up stitches i have very short knitting needles this is actually just one dpn cut in half and I sanded the tips and I glued a little bead on it. Um, you, can, you can totally use whichever type of needle you want. The first thing that we want to do is determine the corner you're going to work on. And then to just go through the corner with one of your needles. So, and really, that is just picking up both loops of that stitch on the corner. It doesn't really matter if it's exactly a stitch or if it's one loop or, you know, as long as you go through it. You then take your yarn and you leave about 15 centimeters, uh, which is about six inches. You wrap it around I do that like like this and then I pick up that loop through the blanket corner this is our first stitch I'm gonna hold that needle in my left hand and we are doing the knitted cast on which you might have done before so with my other needle I'm inserting into the stitch and I'm wrapping the yarn around as if I'm going to knit this stitch but now, instead of sliding the loop off of that needle, I'm keeping that on and I'm putting this loop on that needle as well. So now I have two stitches. I decided to then skip one. You don't make the stitch though, because you want it to stay the same size. If you skip the stitch, you'll be making it smaller. So I'm not going to skip the stitch, but I do want a window. So every time, I'm going to leave it. And I put it on, then I insert in between these stitches again, wrap around, pull up a loop, put it on the left hand needle, and one more time. So you have five stitches. See? Okay. Now this loop, where it's attached to the blanket, it may pull a little bit large just because there's our thread end here. So pull it tighter whenever you feel like you need to. Now we're going to look at row one of the pattern. So it says row one, right side. We're on the right side. Slip one knitwise. That means we insert into the first stitch as if to knit, and then we slide it off. Then knit one. And at this point, it might look a little bit weird. The first stitch might kind of slant around the second stitch. That is fine. Then we purl one. And we knit one. And now comes the most difficult part, which is not that difficult, but you just need to pay attention. So I'm gonna read the pattern to you first. Um, you now have one stitch left on your left hand needle. Lay this last stitch flat against the edge of the blanket. With your left hand needle, pick up a stitch at the edge of the blanket here. With your right hand needle, insert into both loops as if to knit and knit together as one stitch. Okay, now what does that mean? It's a little bit uh, difficult to see with the very first stitch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up this loop of the edge of the blanket that is closest to where I am, right? And that is one of the loops of the blanket cast off. So I'm going to go through there, 
Then I'm going to go through both loops with my right hand needle and knit them together. I'm going to tug on this beginning a little bit. There. Okay. This will become clearer on the next right side. So now we are turning to the wrong side and we look at row two. We slip one purlwise, so that means I'm going to keep the yarn in front and slip this one stitch as if to purl. Then knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and turn work. Okay. Okay. So row three. Slip one knitwise, knit one, purl one, knit one, and now we have one stitch left, and we want to pick up one stitch at the edge of the blanket and knit it together with this one. So I'm laying the stitch flat. And kind of where it hits the edge, that's where I want to pick up one extra loop. And then I knit that together. I'm going to do this a couple more times, and then hopefully it will be a little bit more clear. So wrong side, slip one purlwise, then knit one, purl one, Knit one, purl one. Turn your work to the right side, slip one knitwise, knit one, purl one, knit one, and then we get to use up one more stitch of the edge. So just gonna use the next loop of my blanket and knit it together. You know, you might have to skip a loop every once in a while to make sure that the border does not go wavy. And just to let you know, this is what it looks like when you're picking up too many loops and when you need to skip a few more. Because, as you see, the point of the corner is being pushed outwards, which means that I've got too much width here, which is being caused by picking up too many loops and knitting a row for each of those. Um, if I try to smooth this corner out, you will see that this starts to wave. And if you if you just smooth it out and if you don't look at the corner, it it will look like it is just completely straight, which might be uh, which makes it difficult to see whether you're picking up too many um, loops or not. But I thought that showing you this might make it easier to notice. I'm going to show you a couple more times. So on the wrong side, we slip one purlwise, and then we knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And then on the right side, slip one knitwise, knit one, purl one, knit one, and then with your left hand needle, see I'm spreading it out a little bit more, this is the stitch that we used the previous right side row, and here is the next one, so I'm going through that. and knitting it together. And that is how you knit this blanket edge. Um, now I'm going to show you how it looks when you've got a little bit more. What if watch day went your way? Wanna see how we got here? Reverse the way. Here you can see it creates a nice little, almost braided effect on the blanket edge. 
then um, underneath that braid you see the color of the blanket peeking through that's what you see here as well and there and then the edge of the blanket has this really nice braided effect as well and that is because we are slipping the first stitch of the needle when you get to a transition from one blanket square to the next you want to skip a few stitches so you don't want the border to be wavy so you might just want to pick up this stitch right and there's another one in in the seam here but I think this might be the last stitch I want to pick up and then pick up this one next so that it's kind of closing it in a little bit more but now I want to show you what to do when you get to a corner. So I've just unraveled this bit so I can so I can show you again. So in I'm on the right side now, and for the for this right side, I'm going to be using the yeah. corner here. So I'm I'm reaching a corner. Um, so again, oh, let me do English style. So I'm slipping knitwise, knit one, purl one, knit one, and then I'm picking up a stitch at the corner and knitting that. And when do you know when you're at a corner? Well, for me, it's just when, when I look at the square and there's really not a stitch, you know, above this. The the stitch that I would pick up next is, it kind of belongs to this edge, right? So I would be going sideways. Before I do that, I want to knit upwards. So let me just give you a little visual representation of what we're going to do. We have the blanket corner here. I have my blanket edge. And we are now going to knit a couple more rows so that this sticks out. Right? We are going to knit that. And then we're going to bind off some stitches here. And then we're going to turn. We will still have one stitch left over here. We're going to pick up more stitches here along that edge and then continue with our edge here. Okay, just a little visual representation. And now we're going to knit this little piece in simple steps. So we're going to knit five more rows. We're starting, starting with a wrong side row and that is slip one purl wise and then our knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And I really urge you to make a note of the rows you're doing because I always lose count and I don't find it easy to see on my work how many rows I've done. So, then the right side row, which is a little different than a normal right side row. We slip one knitwise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I keep switching to continental style because that is my usual knitting method. Uh, so knit one, purl one, and then also knit one, purl one. Nice and easy. Turn your work. Oh, I need to write that down. Right side. Slip one pearlwise. Knit one. Pearl one. Knit one. Pearl one. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just noting this off screen now. Three rows down. Slip one knitwise. Knit one, purl one, 
knit one purl one that was row four turn work slip one purl wise knit one purl one knit one purl one right so what we have now is the little extra strip of knitting right we have that little corner there okay stay with me we bind off in pattern we slip one knitwise knit one we bind off one stitch oh you might have noticed that before i did that i did a little wiggle with my needle that's to give the stitches a little bit more length so that my bind off is stretchier so i bind off by pulling the rightmost stitch over the one next to it then purl one and here comes a little, little wiggle there bind one off knit one Wiggle, bind off, and purl one. And bind that one off. Oops. Okay. I'm going to slide yeah, it on the middle of the needle straw. and do some more. 20 years ago, 25 years pulling. ago, when you sit there and like this. There. You know, I would have this my that nice. Okay. Ooh, so we have go, one go. stitch left, which is almost always the case yeah. on a bind off row. But no, we are not going to snip the thread yeah. and pull it through unless you want to use a different color here, which could give a nice effect. 
but we are going to continue with the same color. What we want to do is pick up three stitches here. Um, we have one stitch here, and we'll pick up three stitches here, which means we'll have four, and then we'll pick up one in that loop there. Um, so we'll have five. See that we have these two knots here, and that in between we have horizontal bars. Since we need three, and we have one, two, three horizontal bars, I might just use those. So I'm just picking this one up like this, and then you could knit it through the left leg, but I'm just going to go easy and knit through the right leg. And again, picking up here, two, and then three. There. Now if you find that these holes, see, those, if you find them a bit too big, then you can pick up stitches in between, or you can, let me show you an alternative, I picked up this one, you can also knit that like that, there's my yarn, because then it kind of makes that tighter. Okay, we have four stitches now, we need five. So, let me just quickly read the pattern. Yeah, then pick up one stitch from the blanket edge to have five stitches in total. And there's a tip. Pick up that one stitch of the blanket edge within the loop of the last knit two together. So the braided edge continues. Because if you were to just, you know, pick up a stitch here, then this braided edge would not, it would have a little break in it. So I insert in there. Wait, how do I do this? Maybe I'll just use my right hand needle. I insert in there. I wrap around and then pick up. I'll, I'll do that one more time. Our right hand needle goes into that loop and out through the back, wrap around and pick up. And now you have five stitches again. And now we can resume in our pattern starting from the wrong side. So that's a row two. So that is slipping pearl wise. Knit one, pearl one, knit one, pearl one. Turning our work, we're on the right side. Slipping knitwise, knit one, pearl one, knit one, and then this one. We pick up a loop. Oh, which one should we pick? And this one. Oh, that's a little tight. Let's see. Oh. oh, this one. So, this one, and we knit it together, same as we've done before, and you'll see that the braided edge turns a corner and then continues. Right, and say you come to the very, very last bit. Right. So we are knitting our border up to here. You are using this last loop to pick up and knit together. And then you also knit five 
rows so you have this little corner and then you can sew that little edge together with this edge and you'll have one piece of yarn here but you also have the, the yarn from where you bind off so that you can sew it together and that is how you knit your blanket edge Thank you very much for following this tutorial for the blanket edge. If you like this tutorial, please do have a look at my other patterns and tutorials. Um, I'd love to see you there as well. You can find me on my website, newleafdesigns.nl. Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel, New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen. I'm the designer behind New Leaf Designs. You can find me on my website, newleafdesigns.nl, or it's also my Instagram handle. So in today's video, I have a roundup of 12 sweater knitting patterns, and those 12 sweater knitting patterns are free and size inclusive. So what more could you want? I am super excited about the designs that I'm going to show you. Uh, so I, I just want to preface this by saying I am all for designers charging for their patterns because, you know, I'm a designer myself, we need to live off something. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of work goes into these patterns. And a lot of designers are also putting out their designs for free uh, to help out people who don't have an extra budget to pay for patterns or just to help people find them as designers because sometimes you just want to have a little taster pattern um, to, to find out what this designer's style is like um, because not all patterns are standardized so you might need some time to get used to how a designer is writing up their pattern and to figure out if you like it or not. So free patterns are amazing and I'm going to share 12 of those with you today. So on to the first one. I'm going to move a bit more to the side so I have room to place a photo of the sweater. So first up is the Savannah sweater by Martin Story. Uh, Martin is a very well-known designer. Um, I think he designs for Rowan um, mostly. Is that true? I'm not sure. But <laughs> So Savannah, uh, it's a beautiful sweater. It's a v-neck cable sweater. It has lots of cables throughout. It has a drop shoulder. Um, looks absolutely beautiful. It's shown in a kind of uh, cream beige, uh, maybe oatmeal, but of course you can, I mean, I'm picturing it in blue. It's, yeah, it's kind of my go-to color for cable sweaters. Uh, it is available in, from size 28 inch to 62 inch. And I will say the sizes are kind of grouped um, like the smallest size is 28 to 30 inches and then the next size is 20, uh, 32 to 34 inches and then and the largest size is 60 to 62 inches. So a very generous uh, size range. It's available for free. Um, you do need, oh right, and I will link all of these patterns in the description below. Um, it is available in English, French, and German and you will need a uh, Rowan um, website account for it and then you will be able to download it for free so i will be linking that down below um yeah, just a beautiful sweater uh, by a very experienced designer um so if you want some cable you can see this one this is the one up next is the Kansas Jumper by Irene Lin, and Irene is, uh, I, I'm not sure actually how long she has been designing, I think a fair couple of years, uh, but I've only recently discovered her through Instagram, and I absolutely love her patterns. Um, now, she only has a couple of free patterns, and this is one of the Kansas Jumper. Um, I will say that size-wise, it's a little bit confusing for me, because she has seven sizes, from XS to 3XL. Uh, but they're only like one inch apart, which is a bit, uh, like that, that is very, very detailed and specific, uh, to have a 36, uh, bust size, but also 37, 39, 41, 42. It's just very, very specific. So that does kind of, um, yeah, <laughs> strike me as a bit odd. So the largest size is 46 inches, which is not really... It is supposed to be worn with uh, four inches of positive ease. Um, so the bust circumference is 46 inches. So it should so it should give a largest um, finished circumference of about 50 inches. 
So size-wise, this is probably the least inclusive one of the bunch, um, but still, um, I'm finding that from the pictures it looks very oversized, so it might have a little bit more range in there than it specifically says. Uh, it's available as a free Ravelry download, so I will be linking the Ravelry page down below. Um, so about the sweater, it is a top-down sweater. It's a yoke sweater, which means that it uh, has increases placed regularly. Uh, around the yoke and it is also a fade sweater so that is amazing for using up uh, basically random yarns uh, so because I'm imagining that if you're a knitter with a uh, smaller budget that you also you might not have a lot of skeins of the same color so that's also why I put this um, sweater pattern into this random so the canvas jumper by so when you buy material you buy in bulk next up is Sajuni <laughs> At least, it's I think it's, it's like okay, season, right, in Italian. I only know Italian pizza names, I'll be honest. Uh, Sagione by Courtney Spainhauer. Uh, it's available in sizes extra small to 6XL, uh, uh, which is 38 inch. That seems large for extra small. Oh, that's finished measurement. All oh, right, all right, all right. So the finished measurement of the sweater is 38 inch for the smallest size and 65 inch for the largest size. Let's see if it gives any positive ease. Oh, it's modeled with eight inches of positive ease. So that is quite a lot. Um, that is quite a lot. So that means that for the largest size, which is 65 inches uh, with eight inches of positive ease, that means you have a bust size of 40, no, 57, perhaps 57 inches. But, you know, eight inches is a lot of positive ease. Uh, most sweaters are also able to be worn with maybe four inches of positive ease. Um, so, yeah, it's a beautiful sweater. Um, kind of what is the construction? I'm not sure if it's uh, top down or bottom up. Ah. Oh, ooh, interesting. <laughs> All right, I read up a little bit about the construction, and this is very interesting. So it says the sweater is worked in two pieces, flat from the center to the edge of the body. So it seems that it's knit from the middle to the outside. <laughs> so that you start with the middle line of the body and then you work towards the sleeves. That's very interesting. But also it has a very nice stitch detail on the shoulder. I will include a better picture of that. Uh, and I just thought it was beautiful. And with a very generous size range. So... That is wonderful. Um, so yeah, that was the Sajoni sweater by Courtney Spainhauer. Up next is the gingerbread sweater by Espastrico. And Espastrico, they have many different free patterns. Um, and I think mainly because they are a yarn store. And you will find that with uh, yarn mm. brands or yarn stores, you know, obviously they want to promote their yarn. They want to primarily sell their yarn. So you will often find that, that they have free knitting and crochet patterns, which is amazing for knitters on a smaller budget. And so I would definitely go check out this festival because they have many different sweater patterns, but this is the one I chose because it's a raglan sweater and I love a good raglan and um, it's a very good uh, base layer. And no, I don't mean layer. It's a very good uh, staple piece for your wardrobe. Uh, it uses a uh, I think it also uses a mohair yarn in there. No, I'm not sure. It uses two, two yarns held together. Uh, so it's a top-down raglan. Yeah, it's just beautiful. I even just love it in this color. Um, the sizes are 43 inch to 64 inch. So that's, it's a bit large. I mean, the smallest size is, is a bit large. Uh, let's see if they mean that as a finished size or as a bust size. Okay, finished circumference. And it's meant to be worn with 10 inches of positive ease. That's a lot. Um, and they also say that some people prefer a closer fit. Do not be afraid to select an option that provides less uh, than suggested ease. All right. So if you were to wear it with 10 inches of positive ease, then this would be for bus sizes 33 inch to 54 inch. Um, so yeah, if you want to wear it with 10 inches of positive, positive ease, but that really is quite a lot. Um, so yeah, you could also say that the largest bus size is maybe uh, 58 uh, or even 60 inches, because then you would still be able to wear it with four inches of positive ease, which is already a lot. I mean, which is already a fair amount of ease for, um, for sweaters. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
You attack me without a weapon. Why? The gingerbread sweater. Love it. Up next is the All Together sweater by Hohi Lucatelli. And if you don't know Hohi Hohe Lucatelli, are you even a knitter? I mean, <laughs> she is one of the most experienced, most well-known and well-loved designers. It's, yeah, Hohi is amazing. And this is a free pattern of hers that she has published um, uh, basically at the start of lockdown, I think, or maybe slightly after. Yeah, in June 2020, the sweater has all together in uh, color work on the front. And it's basically as a, you know, because from the start of the pandemic, we kind of had to you know, get together and, you know, support each other. Uh, so that's also the backstory behind the sweater. Uh, obviously, um, she has lots of uh, color work charts in there. So if you don't want the specific altogether color work chart in there, I'm sure you could, you know, repeat the, the leaf pattern again, because she has some beautiful um, leaf and flower patterns in there. Uh, so let's take a look at the sizing. Um, the sizes are from extra small to 4XL. And what does that mean in inches? Because I'm always looking for the inches uh, and not the, okay, what does this designer think is median? Because it might vary. So it says the bust mm -hmm. circumference. Okay, there are finished measurements for the bust. The smallest size is 46 inch and the largest size is 68 inch. Um, and it is suggested to wear with about 10 inches of positive ease so again that would mean that for the smallest size you would have a bust size of 36 inches which is technically a small instead of an extra small so it's a little bit it's a little bit wanting on the smaller side to be honest the largest size is 68 inch which with the suggested amount of positive ease would mean uh, a bust size of 58 inches oh it does say that um it has a little bit of a note about the sizes. This sweater uses a very large color work motive for the letter section, so for the text. Um, the pattern could not be resized to adjust for each individual size. The smaller sizes have more positive ease, otherwise the motive wouldn't fit. Okay, so that's why the smallest sizes are a bit large. Um, however, every effort has been made to adjust design so that the neckline and the sleeves fit perfectly. For the larger sizes, we use a very simple dotted floor chart dotted floral chart on each side of the main panel to make up for the stitch count difference. All right. Okay, but I wanted to know about the construction. Okay, it is top down. Yeah, I think it's top down drop shoulder. I think that is it, but it doesn't really say in the description. I'm just reading from the Ravelry tags. So this is also available as a free Ravelry download, so I will be placing the Ravelry link down below. Then we have the Flax sweater by Tin Can Knits, and this is, I think, one of the most well-known sweater patterns ever. Uh, Tin Can Knits is amazing uh, for their sweater patterns, and Flax is one of their free patterns. They have a couple more free patterns, so definitely check out just um, the designer page. Uh, they also have a Baby Flax, I think. I'm not sure if it's called Baby Flax, but... Um, yeah, the, the size range is huge. Uh, so sizes available, it says. It starts at zero to six months. <laughs> um, so they have various kit sizes up to eight to 10 years. And then uh, the adult sizes start at extra small to 6XL. And let me just give you the uh, inch, the chest measurements for the adult sizes. Yeah, so it starts at 31 inch. See, that's a, that's a proper extra small no, measurement, I think. Sorry, that Why? might seem weird to say. But so the smaller size range is also just very well represented in this pattern. Uh, 31 inch to 66 inch. Again, just you can't go wrong with tin cans. They are amazing uh, size inclusive wise. Um, and I think it is top down. I've knit this sweater and I still can't remember. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, it is top down. It has raglan sleeves and it has this kind of garter stitch um, detail on the on the side of the sleeves, which if you don't like it, you can of course omit it. Um, so yeah, top down and the raglan, beautiful. Um, yeah. 
you can't go wrong with tin can nets. I mean, this is my go-to for baby nets. Um, right, so next up isn't technically a sweater, it's a crop top, but <laughs> still wanted to include it because it is the Summer Secret Crop by Jessie Made Designs. And Jessie Made is known for her size inclusivity. So the sizes available are extra extra small to 5XL to fit a bust measurement of, I always like that wording because then you know it's the bust measurement of the person and not the finished measurement of the garment. So to fit bust measurement of uh, 24 to 26 inches for the smallest size and uh, where's yeah, and 60 to 62 inches for the largest size, and all of the sizes are pretty close together, so you have 24, 26 inch, 28, 30 inch, 32, 34 inch, so, um, and it's just a very cute crop top, I'm thinking it's bottom up. Yes, it's a bottom-up design. You start with some ribbing and then it's stuck in net. Um, and then you have your straps that kind of crisscross in the back, which is really, really cute. Uh, it only uses a small amount of yarn. So if you have a special skein or two in your stash, then, um, then you can easily get this top out of it. Um, oh, oh, a side note here. Um, the Summer Secret Crop will be available for free for the duration of the COVID-19 crisis. Okay, so it's still free right now on 17th of April, 2023, um, but yeah, it might not be free forever. I mean, who knows how long this is going to continue, right? Um, or whenever you're going to be able to say it is over. Right. So it is free for now. Go and grab it. Um, yeah, I've already knit a crop top by her and it's really fun. Um, yeah, it's just a really fun knit, actually, also. Um, right, so on to the last five patterns. Next up is a top, not a sweater, but a top uh, called the Picnic Folks Top. And it's actually by a very new designer, Wan Cheng Hua. Sorry, I might be saying that wrong. Wan Cheng Hua? Yeah. I'm thinking it is. And I'm pronouncing it with the Mandarin Chinese pronunciation because she's from Singapore, but it might not be correct. So apologies if I'm mispronouncing it. So the Picnic Folks top is oh, so cute. Um, and it's uh, knit with cotton um, because I figured beginner knitters, well, you know, knitters with a smaller budget are often also beginner knitters um, because as you um, get more experience with knitting, you tend to uh, put a larger amount of your budget towards knitting. It's just the way it is. So, um, but, and beginner knitters are often also a little bit um, scared of wool. <laughs> um, so this is a cotton knit, which I thought was very nice. And it just popped up on my Ravelry uh, new designers page. And I check out her Instagram, which is nitty gritty underscore SG. Uh, I think it was Singapore. Uh, so yeah, go check her out. Um, and I was blown away that one of her very first designs is so size inclusive. So it is available in nine sizes. Um, and the smallest size is a 31 um, inch bust. And I let's see, that's the garment bust circumference. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's the garment, the, the finished garment circumference. So the smallest size is 31 inch. So that's pretty small. Um, and the largest size is 63 inch. And it's designed to be worn with about two inches of positive ease. So it's pretty snug. But again, it's, it's a summer tee. So you usually have a bit less of positive ease because uh, for sweaters, you know, in winter, you, often you're going to be wearing them over another layer. And with summer tees, not really. So uh, so there's less positive ease, two inches, so that leaves for the largest size uh, that you'd have a bust size of six to one inch. So again, it's a really, really nice size range, especially for a new designer. Um, so yes, very, very well done. It's available in English. Um, and this is worsted weight yarn. Not sure I'm saying that now because I haven't said that for any other <laughs> uh, of the sweater patterns. Um, so let's see. The Picnic Folk Top is a summer shirt that is knit top down with a Another pseudo saddle shoulder construction. Very, very nice. um, the neckline shaping is done by knitting flat back and forth with lace work on the shoulders, and the neckline is then joined in the rounds. Very nice. Um, so instead of short rows, as I usually see in a sweater, you have you first just knit the back 
back out. And, and I will include, I, I, I will have included a picture of the, um, the lace design there as well, because it's not very visible from the uh, Ravelry pictures, but I did, I did see a detailed picture on either one of the project pages or on our Instagram, so I will be sure to include that as well. Um, yeah, I might actually just cast this one on this year because it just looks so fun. Um, right, so next one. Next up is the Punk Basic Yoke by Kofagara. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly uh, because I've been just thinking about it and I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I know it's a, she's a Spanish designer. I don't speak Spanish, so I'm very sorry. Um, so it's a very simple yoke sweater knit from the top down. Um, very easy knit and um, very good basic to have in your closet. It's available in nine different sizes. Um, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, it says this pattern has a pocket <coughs> ease of about five centimeters, which is about two inches, and it's already counted. So, so I think in the bust circumference total that she has already calculated in that positive ease. So this will be the finished yeah. garment measurement. Uh, the smallest size is 30 inch. Um, and then the next size up is 32 and something something inch. Um, and then the largest size is 61 three seven quarter inch. Wow. Uh, so about 61 inch. So with the positive ease, uh, that leaves you with a bust size of about 59 inches. So from 28 inches to 59 inches that's a pretty solid size range uh, it gives you the yoke depth as well in the description um, and the yoke depth is basically from neckline to your armpit and um, yeah you're gonna want to check that as well because if it's like too long uh, you're gonna be left with poncho sleeves um, it's knit with two yarns held together and it's available in English and in Spanish and also as a free Ravelry yeah, like myself, I will be linking the Ravelry page down below. So down to the last three patterns, and two of those are cardigans. Um, the first one, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, uh, it's by Amy Christophers, and the pattern is Au Sable? I'm not sure. Oh. Uh, right, let's see. Okay, okay. The Au Sable cardigan is named for the <laughs> Osable River that runs from the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York to it Lake like Champlain. Right. I'm, I'm just really not sure. So, for the size range, it's a little bit weird, I will say. Um, because it just seems like it's only for the large sizes. So let me let me dig into this. So it says it has sizes extra small to 3XL, um, but the finished sizes of the garment, the smallest size is 57 inch. Wait, wait, wait. I just said centimeters. <laughs> okay, backtrack. The I just said the centimeters for the length of the garment. So uh, the smallest size is 40. Point seven inches. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Forty inches. Uh, so say if you wear it with six inches, that means that you have a thirty-two, no, thirty-four inch bust. Uh, the largest size is sixty-six inches, which means that you would need a sixty-inch bust to wear it with the recommended amount of ease. There we go. Okay. So uh, thirty-four inch bust to sixty inch bust, still pretty solid size range. Um, yeah. But again, so she, um, so Amy Christopher's uh, has the largest size, a bust size for 60 inch, um, which she then calls a 3XL, which I feel like is not really in line with what other designers are. Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to knit 
the My Favorite Baby Blanket pattern, which is a Dehart House Designs pattern based off of the uh, Grandmother's Favorite Dishcloth pattern that I've been knitting for years and has been around on the internet for years and probably well before that. Uh, but what I've done is taken that general pattern and blown it up into a baby blanket. And this tutorial video is going to take you through all the steps of that pattern. That pattern is available for free as a free download on Ravelry. The link is down below in the description box. Feel free to go snatch a copy for yourself. I'll show you in video format how to work through this pattern. Let's go. All that I use for this pattern. So the very basic supplies needed and all that I use for this pattern uh, include a US size 7 uh, circular needle and I go with the circular uh, because of the long cable it's going to help accommodate that very long diagonal of the blanket which is the longest part of the blanket so I can hold a lot of stitches on here and be easier for me to hold easier on my wrists. Um, US size 7 is also four and a half millimeters um, for the size and a tape measure is really handy uh, so we can tell where uh, we need to stop increasing and start decreasing so to measure the edge of the blanket i am going to be using inches uh, but you can easily convert this to centimeters and then your yarn so i'm using two cakes of mandala this is lion brand mandala i've got two different labels here but they're the same um, yarn so i'm going to be using this color is uh where does it say the color ah cupid is this color and I do like on the label it does give you a preview of the colors here even though you can see them in the cake it's still nice to see them lined up here because you also get an idea of how wide these stripes are so I'm using Cupid and this one uh, is sort of a muted rainbow uh, this one is Valkyrie and you can see both of these skeins are 150 grams uh, 590 yards uh, this is not worsted weight as much as I thought it was. It's um, it's rated as a three, a light yarn, uh, which is like a sport weight or DK. Um, oh yeah, here it is over here. So it is a, a sport weight or DK weight yarn, not worsted, but uh, because this pattern is not based on, um, it's knit until you get a certain size, right? So. Um, you could really adapt this for any weight of yarn, worsted weight, fingering, um, and just you'd have to adjust your yardage according to that. Uh, this is 100% acrylic yarn. I like to use 100% acrylic yarn, especially for uh, baby items because uh, babies are messy and don't know how to, uh, you know, stay clean and not spit up on everything or whatnot. So it's I like 100% acrylic because it can easily be thrown in the washing machine and the dryer, and uh, this is going to hold up. Uh, it's going to hold up its size, its shape. If anything, it's going to get a little bit softer over time. Uh, but having uh, a baby item that's easy to wash is really important in my book. Uh, and I'm not a mother, uh, but I am an aunt, and I've been around many children, and I know that being able to wash um, their items uh, is a real uh, big perk. So I'm using 100% acrylic for that reason, just because it makes life easier for whoever's gonna get this blanket. <laughs> so we're going to get started. For work, play, and every day, upgrade with over 1 million parts and accessories and bring your truck to life, real truck. Alright, so
So I'm going to use a long tail cast on. Uh, and I like to use a long tail cast on because I think it looks clean, makes a nice edge. Even though this isn't a whole edge, it's just the corner, I still think it looks really clean. And also it counts as your first row of knitting. So and if you ever knitted because this is the first time, it, you're like, what corner? It looks like it's like that. So it's gonna look like straight lines if you're in your bottom or down. Everything else is not a straight line, it's actually a circle bars. Circle square lines, deep it's actually making stitches as we put it on there. So I'm gonna have a tail of about a foot, 12 inches-ish, uh, and I'm going to do a long tail cast on. I like to use the twisted German cast on. It's just what I use, I have it memorized. I don't even have to think about it. Uh, but I'm gonna hold the yarn over the needle with my pointer finger, my right hand, and I'm gonna go under these two strands uh, on my thumb, catch the inside of this loop, pull it under, go to the other side, catch this strand coming over my pointer finger and then it creates this little triangle. I'm going to pull the tip of the needle through there and then pull these strands taut. And I'm just going to repeat that. So I'll go under both, catch the inside loop, pull it under, go over, catch the inside loop, pull it through, and then tighten up the two legs. And what's really nice is we're only casting on four stitches. So this is one of the reasons I love knitting corner to corner blankets. Why I love this pattern is because the cast on is extremely short. <laughs> and usually yeah. when knitting blankets, I find that I have to cast on hundreds of stitches and it just makes the project um, difficult to start. But there's a lot of setup. Yeah. So here there's very little setup before stitches finish. Now this counts as the first row. So what I'm gonna do is the setup row in this color as well. So I need to make sure I have my working yarn that's attached to the ball and then I'm not knitting with the tail. So. I have one of those pet peeves where I, I dislike when the yarn comes through the loop, when it gets caught in this loop. So I like to make sure that it's over. <laughs> it's just one of those quirks I have. Okay, so what I'm going to do is knit, and I'm gonna pull on that tail to tighten up that first stitch a bit. It's less awkward. I'm going to knit two stitches, yarn over, knit two stitches. Okay. First setup row finished. Now that's two rows in Cupid. So I need to bring in my second color. So let me find the end of this. There we go. I like to work the cakes from the outside in just because uh, if I work it from the inside out, once all this middle is gone, the outside bit tends to get really tangled. So I like to pull them from the outside in. Now, if I really wanted the stripes to go the other way, I would pull it from the center, totally. So, um, you know, choose choose that order based on how you want the colors to, to fall and play with each other. Okay, so now, in my second color, I am going to work a pattern round. So before I start this, let me say, every time we get to the yarn over, every single row there's going to be yarn over, uh, we are going to knit that yarn over through the back loop because what that will do is twist this stitch and make it act like a knit stitch and it will close up that hole so it will not leave a space. Usually a yarn over will leave a space, uh, which is really nice in lace work to get those spaces, uh, but I don't want those spaces on the edge of the baby blanket. So what I'm going to do is knit. Again, this first stitch is awkward, so I'm going to pull on that strand, tighten it up a bit, and then knit two. Yarn over. I'm already at the yarn over, so I'm going to knit it through the back loop. And then knit the last two. Okay. Turn my work. Yarn management. Yarn over. Knit until you get to that yarn over, which I'm there now. Knit it through the back loop. And then knit those last two stitches. And so what we're yeah, going to do, okay. hang on, let me manage my yarn here. Okay, so what we're going to do is repeat that pattern row every single row. So every single row, we are increasing one stitch. That's what the yarn over is doing. 
is adding one stitch to every row. Now, when we come across and knit that, if we knit it through the back loop, it will close it up and not leave this space. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, since I did two rows back and forth in Valkyrie, my second color, I'm gonna come back to the first color. So, I'm gonna grab this pink here, my first color. Again, with these first few rows here, make sure that you do have your working yarn that's attached to the ball, not the tail. Uh, so I'm going to knit two stitches, one, two, yarn over, knit until you get to the yarn over, and then you're going to knit that yarn over through the back loop. See how it twists it? It makes it look kind of like a knit stitch. That's what's closing up that space. And then you knit those last two stitches. Turn your work and do it again. Knit two. Yarn over. Knit until you get to the yarn over. Knit that yarn over through the back loop. Knit those last two stitches. Turn your work. And then you'll switch colors again. So what I'm doing is alternating every row sorry, every two rows is a different color. So it's gonna make these stripes in the garter. On the reverse side, they're gonna be kind of alternating stripes with these pearl bumps. It's gonna look a little more blended. So depending on the effect you're going for, whether you want stripes or something a little more blended, both sides of this blanket are going to be nice to look at. So I'm just gonna keep going in this fashion until uh, this is large enough. So you're gonna see that here very soon. So I've gone through one color change already where this uh, this light pink has turned into white here on the um, Cupid color. And now this one, uh, what's this color called again? Uh, Valkyrie? Yeah, Valkyrie is gonna turn from this grayish color into this seafoam green and I find the color changes to be quite magical and really fun and part of what drives me through knitting these blankets is I get excited for the color changes in this self-striping yarn so I just wanted to take a quick video of knitting through the color change and how it um how fun it can be just found my actual dream bag on eBay. This super rare center from a seller in Philly. Sports car driving in Soleto's kind of babe. And it came expertly authenticated. Like legit. Real. So now, on to making my dreams a reality. Yeah, eBay. There we have it. No more gray. Now it's going to be a seafoam green. So we'll have the green and white for a little bit, and then it looks like I will definitely run out of white before green. <laughs> uh, and then it will go into this nice, um, like a fuchsia color, and then transitioning back down to the light pink, which is awesome. This is going to be one of the cutest blankets. Uh, but yeah, I just find the color changes really, really fun. So for tip number two, um, the beginning of a row here when you're changing colors. So I just finished with the green, gray transitioning into green, um, and now I'm going to do a white stripe. Um, that first stitch is really loose because it's attached to the working yarn on a different ball. So for tip number two, what I do is I wanna tighten up that first stitch so it's not all loosey-goosey because I want a clean edge on my blanket. I don't want super loose stitches here at the end that are going to get snagged on baby fingers or or car seat buckles or, or whatever, right? I don't want really loose stitches on the edge. I want a clean edge. So what I do is, so the white is my working yarn for this stripe. And so what I'll do is when I put my uh, right hand needle in here is I'll give that first stitch a tug right and oftentimes what I'll do is I'll actually wrap it around my finger and keep it taut while I knit the first couple of stitches so I'll bring my working yarn through and I'll give it another tug because it's going to loosen up a little bit as I knit and so it just keeps it snug enough that 
it's not going to be falling off my needle and I can get that first stitch in the white to have good tension. So that's a tip when you're switching colors that first stitch in the row is going to be loose so hold that other working yarn in either Snug it up on the needle um, and that'll give you a nice edge along the blanket as well. So the blanket has made it to the desired width across my corner to corner. So I have the corner where I cast on over here and you can see the edge of the blanket along here and my live stitches still on the needle. That's the diagonal of the blanket, the center. So I've knit this to be three feet across. So I have a little tape measure here. I think I got this at the dollar store. I love the dollar store. But if I measure this across, it is in fact, you know, yep, three feet across. But remember, you can really make this any size that you want. Um, first thing to keep in mind though is how much yarn you have, okay? because you need to be able to make it to that other corner, all right? So I wasn't sure if I was gonna get three feet because I actually have, um, this Valkyrie skein is actually a little bit light. So I was weighing it to make sure I only used half of it for half the blanket, um, cause I need to make sure I have half left for the second side, right? So it can be a little bit tricky to lay this so that the side is flat. So you can see what I've done is uh, this table's a little short of three feet wide. I think it's 34 inches across. 36 inches is three feet. Um, so I have it on a diagonal here, but um, I straighten out the corner where I cast on and I work hard to straighten out this edge. And I push these stitches back and let them bunch up on the other end. What you want to do is give it the slack over here so that this edge can lay flat for a little bit as well. That's gonna straighten out this corner for you. Um, so I know it can be tricky to measure, but if you can find a nice flat surface, uh, table, the floor is sometimes what I end up using. <laughs> um, this, this is not a terrible way, but also you can go by how much yarn you have if you don't have a certain size in mind. But I have a certain size and I got it. A wash and dry at the salon? Feels like forever. It's time to save you time. <laughs> so now that I have reached the middle, uh, I'm going to stop working the increase round and I'm going to start working the decrease round. There is no middle. You just go straight from increasing to decreasing. So this is the longest row right here going down the middle of the blanket. So here what we're going to do is with our decrease row is we're going to be decreasing by one stitch every row we were increasing by one stitch now we're going to decrease by one stitch it's going to give us those same proportions on the other side all right so i like to hold um i guess i could call this tip number three <laughs> um when working with two balls of yarn i like to keep them on opposite sides and oftentimes i'm knitting on the couch or in a chair in the living room and so what i'll do is i'll set each ball um, next to my legs one next to my left leg one next to my right leg and i try to keep them the same so i've been keeping cupid on my left and valkyrie on my right and it just helps me keep the strands from getting all twisted. So every time I turn back to the stripe side, I make sure that they're not twisted. And it just um, keeps my sanity because when the yarn gets all tangled, it frustrates me. So this helps me manage that. Um, okay, so I worked uh, the last round in yellow, so I'm going to switch back. I'm going to finish this one. Yeah, let me do a couple. Like I did on the side, just to match it up, make it look like it was intentional. These look like army colors. Oh, cute. But anyway, um, yeah. I'm going to finish this one and continue it. Maybe stop right here again on the next row. Go around like eight. When I get to right here, I'm going to switch to another color. I'll probably end up going back to the blue. If you're wondering why I waited so long to use the blue yarn, because look. <laughs> Oh, 
course to look different than you. So when you're looking for it and you make this stop, you're like, damn it. Too pink. And like I said, these are rather long rows. In fact, the longest rows of the blanket right here. I dare you to count your stitches. <laughs> No, I don't, because I don't want to know how many I'm knitting, actually. So what we're going to do on the decrease round is we're going to knit the first stitch, okay? So we're going to knit the first stitch, then knit two together. So that decreases one. Yarn over increases one, which puts us back to the same stitch count, okay? So I decreased one, increased one. Those cancel each other out. So I'm going to decrease one more. So I'm going to knit two together. Here. So I've decreased two and increased one, right? So then I'm just going to knit across the rest of the row. Again, when I get to the end, I'm going to knit the yarn over through the back loop. So if you were keeping the yarn overs to give you that little eyelet edge, you're still going to get those yarn overs and you can continue that eyelet edge if that is what you prefer. Um, if you're knitting it as the pattern is written, where we close up those eyelet holes, um, that is still going to happen. So I'm going to knit across this row to the end and show you what the end of the row looks like. Okay, so I'm close to the end of the row. So just like before, we're going to knit until you get to the yarn over. Knit the yarn over through the back loop. Knit those last two stitches and turn. And then we will just repeat that row. And we will repeat that row until pretty much the end, right? So again, we're decreasing. So I'm going to knit one stitch, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then knit until you get to the yarn over, knit that yarn over through the back loop, and knit those last two stitches. So each row will decrease by one All right, so I'm almost finished with the blanket. I'm finishing up the last corner here, and I'm down to, I think I have seven stitches here. Two, four, six, seven, seven stitches. And I just wanted to show you the end here with the corner because I'm still wanting to knit the yarn over through the back loop. But when I get down to this few of stitches, uh, it gets a little tricky to do that because it's going to start being a part of one of those knit two togethers. So let me just show you. I'm down to seven stitches here and I'm going to knit another decrease row. So I'm going to knit one, knit two together, yarn over, and see this knit two together is going to involve this yarn over. So what I'm going to do is slip make this stitch for right now. And I'm going to slip the yarn over the through the back loop. So instead of slipping it this way, which would keep its orientation, I'm going to slip it through the back loop so that it twists the stitch for me. And I'm going to slip those two back onto my left needle. And then I can knit two together. So I'm still having a yarn over here. Uh, but now I can knit these two stitches together and it's like knitting that yarn over through the back loop. Knit the last two. So I'm going to do that again. Now I'm down to six stitches. So I'm going to knit one, knit two together, 
and you can see the yarn over is right there. So I'm going to slip it through the back loop onto my right needle. Now keeping the orientation we've just made, slip it back to the left needle. So you can see now it's twisted, which is what I want. So now I can yarn over and now I'm at five stitches, which means I'm almost finished. We're going to take this down to four stitches, just like where we started. So I'm going to knit one stitch, knit two together, but look, one of them is a yarn over. So I'm going to do this again, slip that first stitch out of the way, slip the yarn over through the back loop, then put those two back on the left needle. can knit these two together, yarn over, these two together, and now I have four stitches. So the last row here is the bind off. So I'm going to knit. My yarn over is right here, so I'll knit it through the back loop. Pass that first stitch over, knit, pass that stitch over knit, pass that stitch over, and that's it. Now all I have to do is cut my yarn. We'll find my scissors first so I can cut my yarn. And pull it through the loop. Try to tighten it up a little bit. And then I'll cut the previous color as well. So I like to leave my ends a little longer than six inches just because it makes it easier for me to work with. But I will weave these in on the back side and trim the ends, give this a nice little soak, and the blanket's finished. But yeah, those little the yarn overs are a little fiddly at the end. But if you just slip them through the back loop, then it, it does the twisting for you, so it makes the, the two togethers a little easier. How much should good car insurance cost you a month? $80? $120? Nope. Try $38 a month. So there's a comparison shopping site that finds you lower car insurance rates based on your info. You just put in some information that the site needs to find you lower rates. Stuff like, you know. Hi everyone, my name is Garmin from New Leaf Designs and in this tutorial video, I am going to show you how to knit toe up socks from start to finish. These are the classic New Leaf socks. It's my newest pattern, but also in a way it's my oldest pattern because this is just my favorite sock recipe. I've been knitting socks for 10 years. I've perfected it along the way and this is the result. I just absolutely Kudos love it. Uh, so in this tutorial video, will we will be casting on for the toe, Judy's Magic Cast On. Then I'll show you how to increase, how to change color here. Then we're knitting to the heel. I'm going to show you how to knit the heel. It's a German shorter heel. Then I'm going to show you how to pick up stitches here to prevent any gaps, then we're going to knit up, and then we're going to do the cuff and end with a very nice and stretchy bind off. That is what you will see in this tutorial video. The yarn that I am using is Scapius Metropolis. Escapius Metropolis is a wonderful sock yarn. This is perhaps my all-time favorite yarn. Uh, it is 75% merino, 25% nylon, and it is that perfect sock weight of 200 meters per 50 grams. Um, and I'm using this yarn for the solid colored parts of the sock. And for the stripy part of the sock, I am using Scapius Downtown. 
which is a really fun self-striping sock yarn. Uh, it's got the same content, so it's also 75% merino and 25% nylon. It also has 200 meters per 50 grams, and it's just really, really fun to knit up these socks with self-striping yarn, and you just see the color changing, and it's really, really entertaining. Uh, I highly recommend using Scapey Stone Town self-striping yarn for, uh, especially for beginner sock knitters, because you just need a little bit more entertainment to see it through to the end. But I believe in you, you can do this. This pattern is totally suitable for beginner sock knitters. We will get there. <laughs> so the pattern, the classic new leaf socks pattern, you can find it for free on my website. I will link it down below. You can also purchase the PDF version in my shops if you'd rather have a printable version that you can have next to you. The pattern is available for six different adult foot sizes and you can get it down below. Needle-wise, you will need circular needles. I recommend 2.25 millimeter size and 80 centimeter length. Uh, you could also use double pointed needles, also called DPNs. I will not show you in the video how to do that, but it will, um, you will have some written instructions in the uh, pattern for places where it differs. It doesn't differ a lot, so don't worry about it. If you're an experienced sock knitter and if you're looking for a challenge, then you can also choose for the two at a time option. Um, I will have a specific tutorial video for this uh, where I am knitting two socks at a time and you can learn how to knit two socks at a time. I'm using the same size needle, just a bit longer, I'm using a 100 centimeter cord instead of 80 centimeters. 100 centimeter cord is also totally suitable for just knitting a single sock. In the pattern, it also says how much yarn you need. Uh, for all sizes, you will need just one ball of Scapius Metropolis and either one or two balls of Scapius Downtown. So grab your yarn, grab your needles, and we will start casting on. So to start the socks, I'm going to take my yarn A, which is color 37 Istanbul for the color combination I'll be using, and my circular needles, and I'm going to be using both circular needle tips in my right hand. I want to hold them really close together like this. And I'm going to take the yarn and have about 20 centimeters or 8 inches of the yarn tail, and I'm going to lay the yarn across the top needle the needle that's furthest away from me with the ball yarn going to the top end and the yarn tail going towards me so like this and before i start with the cast on i want to twist these yarns so that the tail is twisted underneath so now i've taken the ball yarn towards me and the yarn tail is away from me. Insert your thumb and index finger in between those yarns and take them together with your other fingers so that you can tension your yarn. And now we're going to alternate and stitch to the bottom needle and the top needle. The top needle only has a stitch, so I'm going to okay. a stitch on the bottom needle. Get a good grip on your needles because you your man, needle, sometimes when you have to flip up like this because it doesn't have a stitch yet so that's why it's kind of moving around and the closer your needles are together the neater the is going to be okay so we want a stitch on the bottom needle we're going to do that with our that needle and I'm going no, to go around this way. I'm going to go this way. go around the bottom needle. Are you? Then another stitch for the top needle. We use our thumb yarn. And also we need to go This way is easier for you than do that. This way is easier than do that. And put your fingers back in this position. Many people that use this as so, with the index finger, we go around the bottom needle and bring our fingers back to this position. Oh, nah, I mean, I got it. Yarn, Maria, Maria, the top needle and you know, back Maria, in this position. Because if you, if you put on this a stitch address for so much, and your I don't even want to talk about. like this, then you know and you're going to want crazy, you know, to twist your hands back like um, this because then you can do the next step. Otherwise, you might get a little confused. So we're going to keep alternating the needles. So the bottom needle is next. I can't wait. And if you're confused so about guys. which needle gets a stitch, then you kind of uh, uh, release the tension on your yarns. And you see that 
this one here I is looser. So that's the yeah. one that I just did. This it's on the bottom right needle. There. So now I need to stitch on the top needle. And they always get their yarns from the this opposite direction. Um, so the top needle needs to stitch from the thumb yarn. Cargo, like refrigerator lid. And there we go. There's and nothing in my house always want that you to finish with a stitch on the bottom needle because then you have an even stitch count. So Sorry, you want to place as many stitches on your needles as it says in the pattern. For my size, that is 10 That's stitches. So let's see. Hey, here. Tomorrow. And I have here, so nine, nine, Mariana. ten, eight, nine, ten. But please do check the pattern um, for the amount of stitches that I you want to cast. Even on my so I finished casting all my stitches. <laughs> And now I want to be knitting my first round. So uh, please do note that this very last stitch you might very close, it wet. and that stitch is made with the yarn tail. If that last stitch for you is made with the ball yarn, it doesn't matter very much, but you'll need to do one step differently and I'll explain that in a little bit. So uh, I want oh, to it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, not the stitches here because That's otherwise the stitch can fall off. So I want to secure those. And I'm turning my work with the needle tips facing to the right. I want to be knitting on what is now the top needle. Uh, to do that, I need this needle to come out to the right. So I'm going to be moving it like this sliding it through the stitches so that the stitches on the bottom here are resting on the cable and I have enough room now so I can um, move both needle tips towards each other and again the last stitch which is now the very first stitch that we are going to knit is very loose so I'm just going to place that yarn tail in my left hand right here uh, and I'm going to be knitting the first stitch with the ball yarn now this is the point where I tell you what to do if this last stitch was made with the ball yarn, then you want to, to, of course, hold that ball yarn to keep the stitch from falling off. And you want to knit that first stitch only with the yarn tail. Um, because I want to just keep knitting. If you try to knit this stitch with the same strand that it came from, it will just drop it off and you, know, you won't be able to knit it. Okay, so I'm holding a very loose strand in my left so hand, I'm inserting my right hand, I'm sorry, and I am moving my yarn around of, and knitting that first stitch. And it will still be a little bit loose, so I'm just going to there. be holding on to that strand. The rest of my stitches you know on this side are day twisted. Day. If I zoom in, you can kind of see what I mean. So the right leg right. of this stitch, if you'll notice that here there is a left leg, and here there's a right leg. The right leg is on the other side of the needle and usually it isn't uh, so these stitches are twisted and what that means is that you want to knit it like this instead of like this so i'm inserting like this and wrapping my yarn around now you may not have twisted stitches here whether your stitches are twisted here or not depends on which way you wrapped the yarn around the needle during the cast on. So your stitches may not be twisted here. They may be twisted on the other side, for example. So just know how to recognize a twisted stitch and that you then need to knit through it like this. If you knit through it like this, it also it doesn't really matter. It's, it's the very tip of your toes. Uh, no one's going to look at that. So... Just knit all of these stitches. Oh, oh, and then when you get to the very last one, your left needle will kind of drop off like that. I never, never know. Uh, so then we are at the other side of the work. We have now done half of the round. Okay. So we are going to move our work. We're going to rotate it clockwise. Uh, we're going to take our needle that is out of the work I need and to slide I need it back the into the stitches. The then the bottom of the ball is out. Like and now baby. we insert into this stitch, take our 
yarn, make sure it is the ball yarn, and wrap around and make these stitches. Now these stitches are not twisted for me. Again, they may be twisted for you depending on which way you, you wrap your yarn around for the cast on. So I'll be knitting all of these stitches and then we will have done one complete round. And again, my left hand needle is going to drop off. I'm going to be rotating my work so that this needle tip is facing to the right. The needle that is all the way out like this, I'm going to be sliding it back into the work and the other needle gets to come out. Now, say you are distracted during this step and you don't know if you pulled the correct needle out, then you want to take a look at where your yarn is. And it's a little bit confusing with the tail here right now, but from now on when I refer to the yarn, I'm referring to the ball yarn. So take a look at where your yarn is. It's on this side. That's where we just knit. That is the most recent stitch that we knit. And because we're knitting in the round, we then want to move on to the other needle. So that's where the needle tip needs to be in the stitches. When, you're, when your toe is complete, you'll, you'll get that knitted. Uh, so again, we insert into the first stitch. Um, and now we actually get to move an increase. So how do we make our increases? I do a knit from back increase for the first sock toes. And that goes like this. So I insert, I wrap around, and I pull through. That's basically a simple mid stitch until now. But then you don't let it drop off the needle, but you insert into the back of the stitch. So like that. And then you wrap around again. And then you've made two stitches in one. And you make up this increase of four points uh, divided across the round. So the first one is on the very first stitch of the round, and then we want to knit until we have two stitches left on this side, and do the next increase in this stitch. So a knit stitch, don't finish it, and then insert into the back, wrap the yarn around, and then, point, and then you have one more knit stitch to do. And the reason why I'm doing this on the very first stitch, and then on the, not the last stitch, but the stitch before that, is to make it symmetrical. So, if you look very closely, you can see that there's kind of this bump there. It's almost like a little curl stitch. So I have bump there, and on the other side is there. And if we were to have done this increase on the very last stitch, then the bump would be at the side here. And the way we've done it now means it looks symmetrical. So it's purely cosmetic, <laughs> but um, yeah, this is the way I like to do it. So we are at the end of this side. So we rotate our work again. We move this needle into the stitches and the needle where the yarn is coming from is going out. And we're repeating the increase for this side as well. So I insert, take my yarn, make a knit stitch, and then go into the back and knit another stitch. And then I'm knitting until two stitches are left on this side, right, and then doing another knit front back increase and the last stitch. We are going to be doing a lot of increases but we're going to be alternating knit rounds with increase rounds. So right now we're going to be doing another knit round and then an increase round and then keep alternating that until you have your number of stitches. But I also want to show you something else now because once you have a bit of fabric in between your needles, and for me it's usually after the first increase round, then you can kind of already fold your work like this so that you see like a mini, mini toe and the idea behind that is that 
we want to avoid ladders on the side. So you can imagine that if you're knitting like this and you, you knit stitches there and you knit stitches there, this is getting longer and longer, um, you're going to create some ladders here because that is quite a gap between this stitch and the next stitch. So you want to make that gap as small as possible. And I find that it works best if I just try to, to fold the work, if I try to hold the cable to the left-hand needle. So I'm just going to really squish them together, insert my needle into the next stitch, and then just take my yarn and knit those stitches. And I usually keep holding on to that cable until I've knit the, the first couple of stitches. So let me show you again on the other side. Okay, we turn our work. Oh, right, and for the first two rounds, it's easier to look at your work like this and say you rotate it like this. But now, once once you're folding it, you can also turn it like this. It might seem a little bit weird at the start, but um, again, this is a thing that you'll get the hang of. So you'll insert this needle into your stitches, pull the other needle out, and again, I am folding my work, I am squishing that needle, uh, squishing that cable to my left hand needle, inserting my right hand needle into the first stitch, and then grabbing my yarn. And feel free to pull a little bit tighter on the first stitch, just to uh, yeah, make sure that you don't get any ladders on the side. And then you keep knitting. So I'm almost at the end of my knit round. So then I do another increase round, then another knit round, and you keep alternating them until you have the number of stitches that is set in your pattern. So for example, I'm going to be knitting until I have 60 stitches. So that means 60 stitches in total. So 30 stitches here and 30 stitches there. I often get the question, how do you know if you've just done an increase round or if you've just done a plain knit round? And the key to that is that you want to look at those bumps that we create during the increases. And if that bump is directly below the needle, that means that you've just done an increase round. But if you can see a little knit stitch above it, I've just done a knit round, so that means I need to do an increase round now. So let me make that first increase and show you the difference. So see that with my increase that I just made, that bump, that little pearl stitch, is really hugging the needle. But on this side, I can really move it downwards and I can see that little V above it. And that's how you know if you've just done an increase round or a knit round. For work, play, and every day, upgrade with over 1 million parts and accessories and bring your truck to life. Real truck. Scent can't sanitize. Lysol can. So after you reach your number of stitches that's specified in the pattern, you want that to be your total number of stitches. So for me, I have 60 stitches, which means 30 stitches on each of my needle tips. Make sure to finish with a knit round. So again, you can see that the increase is a little bit further away from the actual needle. Here you can see the knit stitches are that. And then we are going to be changing to the main color, which for me is downtown in the downtown central. When you change the main color, you want to touch it at the next color joint. Because um, I think it looks nice when you start the sock. Let me show you on my other one. When you start the sock with a full color, uh, with a full stripe, instead of if it was just you know, a little bit of a stripe and then continue to do the first full stripe. I just think it looks nice. So what I do is that I pull out the yarn until I get to the first color change and then I make my very first stitch with the yarn right after the color change. So I just attach it to my work and start knitting with it. And then, yes, you will have a little bit of 
excess here and then you can just cut that off and we'll continue knitting. And then you continue knitting with your main color or yarn B, as it's called in the pattern, until your sock is of um, the desired length to put in the heel. And, and when we get to that, I will also be showing you how to knit the heel. In the pattern, you will also find measurements that will tell you when it is time to put in the heel. Those measurements, you will measure from the cast on point of your toe to your current row of stitches. For me, that is 18 centimeters. And it's just under 18 centimeters right now. But in my experience with knitting socks for myself, I find that this is usually okay. One extra point that I want to talk about um, for self striping yarn is that I usually find that it looks nicest if you put the heel in in between two stripes or in the middle of the stripe. So that might also influence you to knit more or less rounds. If you want to place the heel in the middle of a stripe, you just knit to the middle of a stripe and make the heel on the next row. But I'm going to knit the heel in between two stripes. So I've got the green stripe here, which you also see here, and after that is the orange stripe for this colorway. And you want to knit until you get to the next stripe. On the next side, we are going to be doing the heel. And why is that? So say that I knit up to here and decided, well, I'm close enough to the orange, let's do the heel on this side. Then you would have the heel, but this little bit of green, you would have it on top of the heel, and you would have just that little row, or half a row of green, and I want it to be a clean line. So I've started the new stripe, I'm going to place the heel on this side. And for all sizes, we are going to be adding the heel across half of your stitches. So if you have 60 stitches in total, you will knit it across 30 stitches. And to start the heel, we are going to knit it across this side with our heel yarn. And for this colorway, I am pairing it with um, 37 Istanbul, which I've also used for the toe. So we are going to leave this yarn here and knit across this half of the stitches with our heel yarn. So I've worked across half of my stitches in my heel yarn. And now I actually want you to take a look at the pattern if you're able to um, have that beside you, um, because it will really help you to be able to knit the pattern without having the video there. So in the pattern, I say to turn your work to knit in rows. So we turn our work and instead of continuing on this side, we only work on this side for the heel. So, so if you're working on a circular needle, um, you're used to, you know, moving your needle, but you don't have to do that now. You can just keep it like this. We are working in rows, so we are working on the pearl side here. And for row one, which, uh, which says WS, which means wrong side, which is what we are seeing. It says with yarn in front, and we already have the yarn in front because we are on the pearl side. So with yarn in front, slip one pearl. So slip one means to simply take it over onto your right hand needle. Pearl, and the pearl in there means that we do that pearl wise. So we go in there as if to pearl and slip it onto our right hand needle. And now comes the most difficult part of the heel. Um, slip one pearl and lift the yarn from the front upwards over the right hand needle all the way to the back of your work. Tugging firmly forms a so-called double stitch, which is what we are seeing here. We are seeing those two uh, loops, which are from the color from our downtown yarn. So. You don't see the heel color anymore, you see the color that you were using before. Uh, right, so this is a double stitch. Do not call this two stitches because it is just one stitch, because it, it is a double stitch, and we will always treat it as one stitch. So then, we have tucked firmly, and then with yarn in front. So how do we move the yarn to the front again? Not like this, because then we are undoing the double stitch. So we are keeping the yarn there, but we are moving it forward through the needles. So as if you were doing a ribbon and you had just done a knit stitch, and now we are doing a cross stitch, we move it in between the needles. 
to the front. And then purl all stitches until end of needle two. So you will notice in the pattern, I am naming uh, the first half of your stitches needle one and the second half needle two. So purl across needle two. And on the other side, you will notice that the, that the last stitch pulls a bit large because that's where the yarn end is. Uh, and we start to work at the end of the row and continue working on the right side. And we move on to row two of the heel, and it also says RS in between brackets, which means right side. It says again, with yarn in front, now we actually have to move the yarn in front because yarn is in the back. So yarn in front, slip one pearl, that's the same as for the other side, slip one pearl, uh, lift yarn to back as before. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, lift the yarn from the front upwards over the right half line. And again, this forms a double stitch, but it will look different on this side. On this side, it will kind of look a little bit twisted. It might look as if um, there's a little X on your needle. And I'm also I'm holding this end here because it makes it a bit easier. So it looks like this. So kind of like a little X, you can see that. All right, uh, lift yarn to back as before, and then it wants to stay at the back because we are doing knit stitches. If you knit stitches, we need to yarn to the back. So keep the tension on and knit. And this time, we don't knit all of the stitches. We knit until you reach the next double stitch. And for this one, it's really easy to recognize because half of it is in a different color. So you will easily see it. You cannot even see the, the X that I mean here. So you will knit up until and including that last normal stitch. And you will leave that heel stitch on there. So we knit two here to the first double stitch. And then we turn our work. And we are at row three, which is basically the same as row one. It says with yarn in front, and we already have that, slip one pearl, then move your yarn to the back and tug it firmly as, of, as we've done before. And then with yarn in front again, so move it in between those needles to the front. So your yarn has now basically looped around that needle. And now we are going to purl our stitches until the next double stitch. So that is on the other side here. And it's a little bit more difficult to recognize this one because it is not in two different colors. Um, but you might recognize it by the shape now. So you will knit all of these stitches up until here, and this double stitch on the left hand needle. So let me show you here. I have one regular stitch left and then one double stitch, so I'm going to knit that regular stitch. And now we take a look at the pattern. It says repeat rows to two and three until you have certain number of stitches, depending on your size, until you have that number of stitches left in between your double stitches. And what does that mean? Of course, now we still have a lot of double stitches, I mean, a lot of normal stitches in between the double stitches, because we have one double stitch here, two double stitches here, and basically we have all of these in between. So when these stitches um, when you have a certain number of stitches in between, then you move on to the next step, which I will also show you in this video. Alright, so on to the second part of the heel. And let me explain to you where exactly that starts. So, you finish your last double stitch on the wrong side, then you come to the right side, and then you do another double stitch. And after that, you should have an even number of stitches in between your double stitches. And for my size, I want to knit until I have 14 stitches in between, and I have that now. If I had just turned... Well, let me just get this back on the needle. If I had just turned my work and not done the double stitch yet, then I would have 15 stitches and that would leave me confused, right? Because it was an odd number of stitches. So 
you only count the stitches in between when you've already made that double stitch on the right hand side. So I'm knitting all the way across to my first double stitch. And we are knitting that double stitch as if it is one stitch. And you want to make sure that you go, oops, let me show you that correctly. You want to make sure that you really catch those both loops of that double stitch and then pull the yarn through. And then you can turn your work and let's look at row two of the pattern. So we have slip one pearl again, tugging firmly. That just means to just tug firmly here. It does not mean to tuck the yarn to the back because we don't want to be creating any more double stitches now. So slip one pearl, tuck firmly, um, pearl yeah, until you have somebody calling double you. stitch. So I'm at my first double stitch on this side, and here I want to purl it as a stitch. So I insert my needle purlwise, and again you want to make sure that you have caught that stitch through both loops. You wrap your yarn around and you purl it as if it's in one stitch. Michael's top rated and best selling supplies are on sale. Score savings on strung beads and fall floral stems, plus BOGO deals on canvas, frames, shadow boxes, and so much more. Hurry, sail in soon. One night after staying back late at his clinic doing admin, Dr. Tom was buried alive by... Then you turn your work again. So we're at the right side again, and now we are at row three. Um, the yarn is at the back, and it stays at the back. Please note that in the pattern, I'm not saying with yarn in front, so that means the yarn just stays at the back for now. Um, slip one pearl again, tug it firmly, and then knit until the next double stitch. So in the second part of the heel, with each row that we work, we are eating up one double stitch at the end, and then turning, and then also working our way across and eating up one double stitch at the end, and going back and forth and back and forth until we have eaten up all of those double stitches. And you might notice that before you come to a double stitch, there's this gap, and that is totally normal. Um, and usually the gap closes up enough when you knit that double stitch. So don't freak out uh, when you see the large gap because I have that too and it's part of this method. So just continue until you have worked across all of the double stitches. And when you've knitted the last double stitch here on this side, don't forget that you still need to turn around to knit this double stitch on the other side. So you might be tempted or you might just forget and, you know, continue working in the round, but there's still a double stitch right here that we need to knit across. And when we've knit that very last double stitch over there, we turn our work to the right side. And if everything is correct, then you're back here where your downtown yarn is, the main color. And we will continue with that and you can cut your heel yarn. But before we start to knit in the, in the round again, we need to pick up a couple of stitches. And because if we just start here to knit in the round, um, there will be quite a hole here, quite a gap. So we want to pick up some stitches on this side. And we want to pick up stitches so that it doesn't leave a hole. So we don't want to pick up this bar right here. We don't want to pick up this bar here. Um, usually, yeah. if you look at your stitches, which are kind of built like a V, you don't want to pick up those side stitches. Those usually tend to get into and create holes. But if you dip in there and take the horizontal bar, it tends to pull things a little bit tighter. And I tend to pick up stitches from this first column that comes from this first heel stitch. So you want to pick up one or two bars here. It doesn't really matter. Um, if, you, if you pick up two bars, uh, you're less likely to have a hole because, you know, you can fill it up with two stitches instead of one. But you can also just pick up one. 
Uh, just make sure that you pick up the same stitches on the other side. So make sure to remember. And I usually take up the stitches of the main collar instead of the heel. And I lift them on the left hand needle. And then. You're all gonna die! The stitch is a little bit loose because my yarn ends are here. And then and I just knit across this side of the sock. Time snatcher. And do the same reality manipulator. On the other side. False witness. Here we are on Mind the other board. side of the heel. And here as well, I'm going to look at the column of stitches that comes from that first heel stitch. So the first column on this side. And here it basically works the same, but I'm also going to knit them on this needle. So I'm, it's a little bit of maneuvering with your needles here. So from this column, I'm going to pick up two bars and I'm going to knit them on the right hand needle. So that all of my extra stitches. Why are you trying? Do you know that man didn't the heel needle? And so you want to, to make sure that if you've picked up two stitches here, you pick up two stitches here as well. Um, and you know, if you pick up one, then you just pick up one here. And these stitches, you'll keep them for you know, maybe one, two, or three rounds, and then you will decrease them away. Uh, one, one, so you won't do these two stitches at once on a side, but just. You knit a couple rounds, decrease one stitch on each side, then you knit another round and then you decrease the second stitch on each side. Or if you if you think, well, I'd like some more room around my ankles, then you can also keep them for a bit longer. So after a couple of rounds, I'm going to decrease my first stitch here by knitting two stitches together like this. I'll do the same on the other side. Then knit around and then do the same again. All right, and I'm ready to start the cuffs on my socks. And let me just give you a visual example when I start the cuff. So usually I fold my socks flat like this. And the finished sock. I want it to be, I want it to line up with the, with the cast on, um, so that would mean doing this much of ribbing, and I think, I think I want to do that much, so, but with the self-striping yarn, you can also very easily count the stripes that you've made, so for my side, I can get 10 stripes here for the foot, and then I can also knit 10 stripes for the leg. One other thing to keep in mind when working with self second yarn is when exactly that you switch to the cuff color. Because I have quite a bit left still of the blue before it changes to the pink. Um, I probably won't be able to do a full side, but I don't really need to, I think. So I think I'm just going to continue until I, just before the color change and then change color to the cuffs. So let's see how much I can still do. Coming up to the end. Okay. Okay, I can probably do one more. Okay, but I can see some purple at the end of those stitches. So I'll, I'll stop there and then I will change to the cuff color. And with the cuff color, you are gonna want to do one full round of just knitting. And let me show you why, because if you do a knit stitch and you change color, that's fine. But um, if you do ribbing right away, then it will show, because a purl stitch will take the stitch underneath and pull that back up. So you will, you will see that. So that's why I'm going to do one full round oh, first. And when I have knit one complete round of the cuff collar, then I will proceed to actually knitting ribbing for the cuff. The ribbing that I'm going to do is knit two, purl two. I'm going to 
and this side with a pearl too. Other side, and then in the two. Shows you, you can see for the pearl stitches here that it's not lifting up any of the blue anymore. So I'm going to be continuing this Nichu Pearl 2 until the cuff is on the desired length. And I usually knit between 15 and 20 rounds of ribbing, but I know many people dislike ribbing, so feel free to do less. But I do, I do want to say that a longer cuff um, is really nice for, for the fit. So go ahead and knit your cuff. To cast off the cuff, we are using Laura's Twisty Bind Off, which is a very stretchy bind off and very suitable for size. And the thing I like about this cast off is that it gives you a very stretchy edge, but that when unstretched, it is still straight. It is not flaring out um, like some other stretchy cast off methods. So that's why I really like this. Um, if you do it correctly, you'll see a kind of a zigzag shape. I do recommend uh, getting a, a short needle or a separate needle in, the, in roughly the same size uh, to help you cast off because, um, and it's totally doable with just one circular needle, uh, but just start you might want a separate needle um, because we're going to be twisting this needle and, you know, if your needle doesn't behave, then that may be a little cumbersome. So um, we are going to be twisting the stitches around their axis and that will give a more stretchy edge. So I'm on my second sock here. On the first one, where I started the cuff a little bit earlier, a little bit before um, the halfway point of your stitches, and I started the cast off also at exactly that point, just to clarify that. We are going to work the first stitch as we normally would, and the cast off technique starts from the second stitch. And we are going to rotate this stitch around and the rotation the direction depends on which stitch comes next uh, this is a knit stitch and we want to turn away from us and a way to remember that is that you know if you were to knit this stitch you would go in like this so with the needle pointing away from you and another piece of advice uh, even if you knit English style you want to just hold your yarn in your left hand just to keep it out of the way because we don't want to be twisting that yarn as well. So we are going to be twisting this stitch like this. I'm going to do it again. So I have my stitch here. I'm going to rotate it away from me. If you're worried that your stitch will fall off the needle, you can place your finger on the stitch, then rotate it and let it go. And then I'm going to knit the second stitch and lift the first one over the second. The next stitch is a pearl stitch, so first off I'm going to place my yarn to the front. And we rotate this stitch toward us. And you can remember that by, you know, if you were to insert into this pearl stitch, you would insert like this. So the tip of the needle will also be toward you. So I'm going to rotate the stitch like this. And then curl the next stitch. I slip the first one over the second. The next one is also a curl stitch, so I'm going to rotate toward me and work that stitch. Next up, we have a knit stitch, so I'm moving my knee to the back, and I want to be rotating away from me. And we continue doing this method for all the stitches. And I think you can see why a separate needle would come in handy here. And so I'm going to continue doing this, and I'll show you what to do at the halfway point of your round. If you're noticing that your stitches get a little bit big, then you can, after rotating, you can pull on the yarn a little bit more. Sometimes they get a little bit long while rotating, and then you can cinch them back in like this. And by the way, if you're doing a one-by-one one ribbing, 
Um, you just have to hold the bridge to the same. You just rotate your stitches um, depending on which stitch comes next. I'm at the halfway point now, so I'm working this last stitch. And then what I do is I pull this needle through, and I continue like this. And when you've come to the end of the cast off, you can break off this yarn, and then we can weave in our ends. And for this very uh, last end of the cuff, we also want to do a little bit of sewing here, uh, because now we kind of have a heavy staircase, uh, it's not a completely straight edge. So we want to bridge the gap between here and here. So I'm going to insert somewhere here, um, and you see that as I tuck on this yarn, that this stitch comes closer. And I want to create another little stitch here by going back in here and creating this nice little stitch. Now we are ready to weave in our ends on the inside of the sock. And with the ribbing, I usually like to weave it into this column of what looks like knit stitches here on the back. It's actually pearl stitches on the front, but that doesn't matter. Um, and I'm weaving it in one of these columns. And I'm using a very sharp needle so that I can go in the stitch um, and that I won't show on the outside. And I'm kind of using a twisting motion to go in the stitches. And I go all the way to the beginning of the cuff and then I go back and do the same. in the other direction. But this time I don't go all the way to the end because um, if we snip off this thread we don't want it to come out. Right, and then for the other end, um, so this is how I read an end in writing, but for the other ends, um, it's and I'll show you what it looks like with this end. It's quite short, but I can work with that. Uh, because it is contrasting the thread, so you will be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, and the first thing that I want to do is check out this gap in between those ends. And I want you to notice that if I take this thread and I would weave it in this direction, this gap is still there. Uh, and similarly with this thread, if I move it in this way. But if I weave in this end this way, and this end this way, then that gap is closed. So I'll just weave in this end in this direction. And again, I'm splitting the stitches that you can see on the right side. Oh, another tip, because uh, sometimes I like to pull the yarn apart and instead of cutting it, and then you have a little frayed edge here. Um, if you have that as well, you can pull it over your darning needle, and then you will have a much neater edge uh, to pull through your needle. And yeah, it's, it's easier for me. Um, so this thread, I want to weave it in this direction. And again, I'm going through really splitting the stitches and pulling through. And then I'm doing the same in the other direction. And here I'm really making a kind of a U shape. But you could also do that. Um, you could also do that in, in just a different direction. So, for example, like this. As long as there is a kind of a corner 
uh, in the way you leaving your aunt, then if you took on your project, then the aunt will get um, work on that one, or at least not as easily. And that is how I weave in my ends. And I do that I, in the same way for all the other ends in my sock. And for the ends that you have alongside your heel, if there, is, if there are some more gaps, you can use it to uh, close up that gap a little bit more. And that is how I finish my socks. Thank you so much for knitting these socks with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, and I hope that these will be the first of many, many more pairs of classic new leaf socks. I want to thank Escape Kiss for sponsoring the yarn to make these socks. And I want to thank my testers for knitting these beautiful pairs of socks as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Please do leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, maybe leave a comment. Um, I will leave any relevant links down below. And I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye. Introducing the all-new GMC Acadia AT4. It goes big on capability for even bigger adventures. Live your biggest life. Just your hands and I'll be folded double neck. Um, so some lovely techniques to show you in this video. It's also a great project if you want to use up all your scraps. Um, to follow the video, you're going to need a copy of the pattern, uh, which I will link to you in the description. So you'll be able to get your hands on all the information you need to follow along. Um, and without further ado, so first off, you're going to want to pick a colour scheme. I've gone for a really fun, bright, fluffy, rainbowy kind of colour scheme. I wanted to use up all of these um, ends of colourful yarn that I have lying around and do something with like them. Um, but it would look amazing in anything. You can knit it in one solid colour, you can knit it in pastels, neutrals, monochrome, um, whatever you fancy. So yeah, let your imagination go crazy with it. So the first step is to cast on. Um, and we're starting by casting on with the neckline. This is a one by one double folded over neck. Um, so to make sure the cast on is stretchy and comes over your head, we're gonna do a special kind of cast on where you're using your uh, two needles, so the 4.5 mil and a 6 mil needle, and you'll be casting on over both of these. So that makes the cast on edge nice big loopy stitches that can stretch to fit over your head. Um, so grab the first two yarns that you want to use and we'll start casting on. So you can really cast on using any sort of cast on you like. I like using um, a cable cast on. I think this is called a cable cast on anyway. Um, so I'm just going to do it like that, but it really doesn't matter. Just use um, whichever method you prefer. And yeah, just cast on the amount of stitches for your size in the pattern. I'll just do a couple more stitches just so you can see kind of how the how the double needle cast on works. Get a feel for that. Okay, and then I'll meet you right back here once you've done your cast on. Okay, so I've got all of my cast on stitches ready to go. Um, I've taken out my 6mm needle that I was using to cast on with and from now on we're just going to be working on these 4.5mm needles or whichever size that you need to get the right tension, that's totally fine. Um, and just one little trick that I'm going to recommend that you do is um, cast on one extra stitch. So you'll have your number of cast on stitches plus one extra that we're just going to use to join the, join the round so that there's not a gap um, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay. Now also, because I've got quite a long cable and my stitches don't come all the way round, I'm going to work using a magic loop, which is a really useful trick if you don't have the correct sized cable. You can just take some extra length out and work around normally. Um, so what you need to do is just go through your stitches, pull the magic loop out to create the right size so that your stitches can join. And then make sure your stitches aren't twisted. So just go around and make sure before we join that they're all facing upwards. Yeah, we're good to go. So yeah, your magic loop will look like this. And as we go around, I'll show you how you can keep the magic loop moving each row. Okay. 
so you're probably wondering what we're going to do with that extra stitch that I made you cast on. So we're just going to knit the first stitch and pass that extra stitch over and that stops you getting gappy knitting. And what we're also going to do is just add in a stitch marker here so that we can keep track of our rounds and know how much we've knitted. Okay, so stitch marker in and then we're just going to keep going in a one by one rib. So that's purl one, knit one, and repeat. My internet, my rules. Introducing my home from Verizon. Choose what goes into your internet plan and always know what you pay. The price is the price, guaranteed. Plans start at $35 a month. Only on Verizon. And don't forget, as you go round and you're working your knitting for the jumper, don't forget to change colours as you go. So I won't give away all the details here because you have to buy the pattern to find out how to do the whole technique. But um, I'll show you how to swap one colour out, leave about three, four centimetres of a tail, and then add in your new one. I'm going to add in this pink and then just tie a nice sturdy knot. You can deal with the ends later, or you can do as Larkabaga says and just tie knots <laughs> and don't worry about them. Um, so yeah, that's nice and secure, tie it off again. I think lots of people worry that the knots are going to come undone, but they don't. <laughs> They're fine. And then you can just keep going and knit with your new end of yarn. So that's how it looks with a little knot in the back and you can just continue with those two strands. So I'll see you in nine centimetres time. Okay, it's a new day and I've got my neck ribbing, nine centimetres here, all finished. And I had a lot of fun kind of changing colours as I went, adding in some texture. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to fold over the neck band to get that nice folded double neck that we're looking for. So you're going to finish working your rib, your last round of rib for the neckline when you get to your stitch marker. And then just pass that along. We'll use that later. And we're going to fold our neck. We're still working on our 4.5mm needles and now we're gonna knit every stitch on this needle and every second stitch we're gonna knit into the back to hold it in that folded shape. So I'll show you how we do that. Can knit the first one and then this one we're gonna pick up the stitch from the back. So follow that stitch all the way down and knit into the bottom here. So we'll be knitting through both of these. And there we go, that's our first folded stitch. So again, I'll show you some more so you can get the hang of it. Knit this one as normal, then this one. You're gonna follow it all the way down the back to the bottom here, make sure you're knitting straight down one stitch. So through this loop and through this loop and there we go, second folded stitch, knitting one as normal and then again following it down through this loop at the bottom. There we go. And this is very forgiving, like you don't have to be super neat because um, it's going to be in the inside of the neck anyway, you won't see this edge, but it's nice to keep it nice and straight so that the neck sort of sits nicely and doesn't get twisted. So I'll show you one last time, knit that one normally, and then knit through this loop. 
and then both of them off the needle. So you're going to do that for all of your stitches all the way around the neckband, folding it all up until we get right back here to our little stitch marker at the end of the, the end of the round. So I'll meet you back there. Okay, we're back at our stitch marker. So we've completed the round and we have our lovely folded neck finished and ready to go. Uh, this is what, oh, <laughs> this is what the reverse looks like. So this will be the inside neck. And on the outside, it's just this invisible fold for the join. So it's gonna look really nice. Um, the next few rows might twist your brain a little bit if you're not used to knitting in the round. Um, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything as we go. What we need to do is begin the shaping to form the raglan seams. Um, and we're going to place our stitch markers as we go but at the same time we also need to work some short rows to make the front neck drop lower than the back neck um, so there'll be four of those uh, but don't worry i got you covered so from now on now that we've finished the neck trim we're going to be using our six mil needles or of course you can use the size that you need to get the right tension um, so we're going to be working from the four mil 4.5 mil to the six mil in this round so we can start our, our stitch markers right here. So holding on to that, we're gonna knit the first one. And then we'll do a yarn over from the back of the needle. Then place your stitch marker, then knit one and then do one more yarn over and we're going to repeat exactly the same for every stitch marker as we go so it will be yarn over place the stitch marker knit one and then another yarn over and then you'll knit the amount of stitches uh, listed in the pattern for your size um, the sleeve segments for all sizes are exactly the same so this first segment is a sleeve segment so everybody is going to knit 15 and then we're going to place our second stitch marker, marker number two. So just knitting normally onto those six mil needles. And don't feel bad if you mess this up the first time around. I've already messed it up and filmed it and I had to go again. <laughs> so everybody makes mistakes. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Great. So what do we do? We yarn over, place markers. You'll notice that I'm using markers that are all different colours as well, just help me differentiate between each section, can make things a bit easier. Knit one and then yarn over again. So you can just see we've got the, the yarn over there, stitch marker, knit one, and another yarn over. And now we're onto the back section. So again, it'll have a certain amount of stitches for your size that you're gonna knit. And then we'll place the centre back marker. So we keep losing track. seven and eight and the center back marker is just a bit different we don't increase around this one this one's just going to be used as a counter so we'll be able to count the amount of rows that we've done by this center back marker so as you're going through the rounds you won't increase around this you'll just pass it and keep going Okay, and that comes to the end of our back piece. So you can see how that marker is right smack in the middle, just where we need it to be. Um, and we can place our fourth stitch marker. So we're gonna yarn over, place the marker, knit one, and yarn over again. And then this section will be our second sleeve. So 15 stitches for everybody. Yeah. 
house is now reaming with the smells of cooking meat. stitch marker so again it's a yarn over adding in a gold one this time then we can knit one and yarn over again now okay so we just placed our fifth and final stitch marker and as you can see we've got five stitch markers in place separate different segments that we're working with we've got the two sleeves to the okay one thing i did learn since uh going observe is that if i don't pause the video you guys won't be able to make out what i'm saying I'm on the last row, ninth row, and I decided I'm not going to make it blue. Why? Because I only have a very little bit of blue left. I have some more, but that's my next part. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to make it green. I'm going to stitch right here at the very beginning, the very first stitch. Let it go. Grab three. Now, because you want to start it right there, and you don't want to start it, you don't want to tie it just yet. You can't. You don't have to. Then I'm going to tie it. Because sometimes I'll let it go. Then I got to redo it all over. side here and this will be the front neck this will be the back neck where we have that center back marker okay so don't knit any further what we're going to do now is start doing our short rows so we need to just do four short rows so that the back neck sits up higher and the front neck sits down lower with a bit of a drop so that it's more comfortable and easy to wear so what we do once we've placed our fifth stitch marker we've got that yarn over so knit two more stitches in the pattern it says three stitches but um the one over counts as a stitch and then we're going to turn the work so the wrong side is facing you and we're just going to purl all the way up until after the first stitch marker so all the way around here we're going to purl until we get back to the front one okay i'll meet you there and before you start purling, make sure you pull this this string extra tight <laughs> so that there's no holes in the front neck from where you've turned the work. Okay, when you come across the um the yarn overs, just purl the pull them in a kind of twisted way, I guess you'd call it. So you're purling this front front leg of the stitch. Counting does slow you down. So that it doesn't form in the lace hole. So yeah, just purling that front leg of the stitch so it doesn't form a lace hole. And just keep going around, purling normally. When you're innovative and inspirational to others, they like to keep you around just to let the studio your idea. Okay, so we're back at stitch marker one. We've, we've purled all the way from marker five all the way back around so here, over the back neck, like back to the front. How is it that sometimes um, somebody else has the same exact idea and their ideas go? and they sell hundreds and thousands of the item, but you came up with the idea that it wasn't worth five pennies, but because they got backing, 
and they put up a good branding and all this other stuff, you know, they block for a better word. So what we're going to do now, just using the stitch marker as a guide, um, and just twist those yarn overs again that are around it. We're going to purl until seven stitches after the stitch marker, with the yarn over counting as a, as a stitch. So pass the marker after this one, and then yarn over as a stitch. So. It's a bit tight on these needles still. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're gonna turn the work again. So the right side is facing us this time. Okay, and then pull that working yarn tight again so there's no holes. And we're just going to come all the way back around doo -doo 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 -doo, until stitch marker five. And we're going to do exactly the same on this side, coming to seven stitches after this marker, knit wise. And yeah, pull tight. And as we go, we're going to do what we did on the first round with the yarn overs as the increases. Yeah. So, we're going to get to the marker, and before the marker, yarn over, pass the marker, knit one, and then yarn over, and keep knitting, and you'll do that for every marker as you go, so we're keeping the, the raglan shaping going, even as we're doing these short rows. There's a lot of things to remember at once, but it's okay. It's only for four rows, and then um, you get a lot easier. <laughs> you can just go and do your own thing. So this marker, get to the marker, and we yarn over, pass the marker, knit one, yarn over, and keep knitting. So it's essentially what we did as we were placing the markers, but this time you just pass them onto the other needle. And as we're getting to this centre back marker, just bear in mind that you don't have to do any increases or any yarn overs, anything around it. This is just a placeholder marker so that we can keep track of the amount of rows that we've done. And it just marks the centre back for us, so all you need to do when you get to that one is just pass it to the other needle. Come back, you two. And then again, we're just going to yarn over, knit one, yarn over again, and keep going. And as you can see, we're nearly at that gold fifth marker, so I'll meet you there. Okay, so we're at that fifth marker. I've changed to a nice chunky pink yarn to get some texture in there. And we're just going to do the same that we did at all the other stitch markers. So yarn over, pass that marker. Knit one, another yarn over, and we're going to go to seven stitches, so knit six more, because that yarn over counts as a stitch. Ooh. Okay, so we're seven past the marker now. And we're going to do just what we did before. Turn, so the wrong side of the work is facing you. And then we purl. Pull that tight. Yay. And we're going to purl all the way back to this first marker again. All the way around. 
and then we'll go three past this marker this time, including that yarn over. So one, two, three, and I'll meet you there. And then we can begin our regular shaping, the short rows will be done. Okay, here we are. Beautiful. That's the short rows finished with three rows, three stitches after our first stitch marker. <coughs> and we can turn our work and that continue as normal. Well. You can see the raglan starting to form here. And here, this is how it should be looking. Very, very, and if you look at those short rows and how it's kind of more knitting on the back, so the back neck will be up higher and let the front neck fall so it's easier to wear. So if we turn our work to face us, the right side faces us again, we can start um, just increasing normally, which is how we're going to work the rest of the body um, up until you've got the required amount of repeats. So we'll get to the stitch marker and we'll just do that yarn over, pass the marker, knit one and yarn over again. And just repeat that for every stitch marker all the way around until you get back here. Okay, so we're back at stitch marker one, our meeting spot, and we've completed one full round of uh, doing the yarn overs, the increases at the raglan seams. It's really fun to see how this piece is growing and you can see all the colours changing, I love it. Um, so I'll show you how to do the second row in the, in the increase repeat. Make sure you're just pulling those yarns nice and tight so you don't get these holes where you've turned the work for the short rows. Okay, so the, um, the second row is just knitting every stitch until you get to these yarn overs with the markers and you'll just knit those twisted. So knitting that, that left, left arm of the stitch first, pass the marker, knit one and knit that left arm of the stitch first and that means you won't get a lace hole it just forms a kind of knit stitch there okay i'll show you how to do that at the next marker so you've got the hang of it and then you've got your two repeat rows and you can just keep going repeating those two rows until you've got the required number of repeats or stitches on your needle No matter what you do, sometimes you always find something that you feel like you're good, it's not good enough, or just too good. Why? Right. Because like some people want to do life things. Okay. So, oh. so yeah, just knit that one. You can see there's a yarn over there. So just going in through the front, twisting it past the marker. And again, for this yarn over, in through the left of the front there and twist. Perfect. And you can keep working those two rounds, repeating one after the other um, until, like I say, you've got the right amount of stitches on your needle or um, count the amount of repeats you've done by the amount of holes on your raglan there. So you can see I've done three repeat rows because there's one, two, three little holes. So if you, if you get stuck, you can just count the holes on your raglan and it'll tell you how many you've done. Okay. Okay, it's another new day. Um, I've completed my raglan shaping now. So um, we've come to a point where we've completed the amount of shaping rows that it says on the pattern. And you can really start to see your raglan seam forming now. Um, and again, if you've lost track of how many rounds you've done, you can just count the holes next to the raglan seam. Um, and that'll tell you how many rounds of shaping you've got. And we're back at stitch marker one, our meeting place. Um, and the last row, the last round that you should have done will have been the the round two of the shaping where you knit every stitch and you knit the yarn overs twisted. Okay. So we've got um, cool. a nice fresh round of knitting to work from. Um, and what we're going to do now um, is split the side uh, sleeve sections off and keep those to knit later on a thread and from here on we'll just be working the body um, separately. So what we're going to do, you can take off your stitch markers, you don't need those anymore, just um, the one in the centre back and you're going to take a thread and a darning needle and just place all of the stitches from uh, stitch marker one to stitch marker two onto a thread. Oh, but yeah, you know, 
And that will later become incorporated her business, bought a new car, bought all the supplies. But you see how God don't like ugly? What happened? A couple of months mm. later, her best employee stole her sign. Literally. I don't have to use a thread. I don't have a large enough stitch cut cutter. Cut you find to use that. Anything that just keeps those stitches safe and out of the way. I like using a thread because it's, um, it's light, it kind of doesn't get in the way. It's flexible. Sometimes stitch holders can be a bit rigid when you're trying to trying to knit in a different direction. Not the one that's the whole yeah. Oh, and by the way, okay. I believe it's like the second wave. Um, we're at um, stitch marker two. So that would be our first sleeve. Nobody got those up for now. And then what we're going to do, just to bridge the gap between these two needles, so imagine this is going to be the underarm area. You can sort of see this is where the, the sleeve is going to come out. So the area here is the underarm. So we're just going to cast on stitches for the underarm. Your pattern will tell you exactly how many. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so just casting on stitches with your working yarn, real simple, creating a loop, and that makes a stitch. Don't do them too tightly because you still want to be able to knit into them. That's okay too. I don't need the Make it loop and, and in. Okay, and just keep going until you have the number of underarm stitches for your size in the pattern. Okay, so we've got our freshly cast on stitches for the underarm. And this is our sleeve section, so just keep that out of the way, we're not working on those. And you can just start knitting, just knitting every stitch, and this will create the body section. Pull that yarn nice and tight so there's no hole where you've cast on the new stitches. And this panel will eventually be our back panel. You can tell because we've got our stitch marker number three there at the centre back. So we're going to work all the way over here to this stitch marker, all the way across the back panel, and then we can split for the sleeve again. Okay, so we made it to this stitch marker. We can take that to one side now. We've got one more piece of thread with our darning needle, and we're going to place all of these stitches right up to this stitch marker on the thread for the sleeve. I'll show you a different view this time in case you've never done this before. But yeah, basically placing all of those stitches just as they are on the needle onto the thread. Be careful who you tell your dramas to and your traumas and childhood trauma, because they'll use it against you. Oh, she had issues when they got it now. Oh, she's a sweet girl, huh? Oh, she's a favorite, huh? Guys, listen, the devil's studying. Nearly there. We're just losing the devil, guys, making things he doesn't exist. Meanwhile, he's still studying with him and his minions. Over there, his minions. Okay, so last little bit. And then all day, every day. we've got both of our sleeves split from the body. Oh, God, all day, all day. There we go. Lovely. So you can see our sleeve on the thread. And we're going to do exactly the same as we did for the last sleeve and cast on those stitches for the underarm piece. So again, the pattern will tell you how many to do. I'm mechanically inclined, not just being inclined, I'm mechanically inclined. I wasn't doing 17 like my sister's was. I was doing proper mechanics, proper assignment. Stop playing. Very briefly. And again, we're just going to knit straight into the round. 
pull that yarn nice and tight again. I was going to murder you. And Party boy. there we have Mystery. it. The sleeves are split off. Mm. And here's the finished result. So this is how your piece should look. I've just knitted a couple more rows mm -hmm. um, after splitting the sleeves. So you can clearly see how the neckline is coming together, where the sleeves are going to be, and we'll be knitting down from here to form the body. So keep going, just knitting in the round, forming that body. Um, there's lengths in the pattern that you can follow, or if you'd like it to be a little bit longer, um, you can go ahead and add some extra length and just make it the length you want it to be. And um, I'll meet you when we've knitted the body and we're just about to start doing the rib. Oh, that was in our fire. Hello, it's another lovely new day. Um, I spent last night working on the body of my jumper and here we are. This one has been so much fun. Uh, it's been super chilly, super cold here. So it's been so nice getting cozy in the evenings and working on this lovely jumper. Um, and I'm just loving the colors, how they're coming out. It's just so bright and tropical and sunny. It's giving me everything I need right now. Um, okay, so now that we've um, knitted the body, we just need to knit the rib that's going to be the hem along the bottom here. Um, and to do that, we're just going to switch to our 4.5 needles or whichever needles you've been using to get the correct tension for your ribbing. Um, and then we knit the rib, just however much it says in the pattern for your size. Um, and then we're going to meet back after knitting our one by one rib and just cast off and then the body will be done. We can move on to those sleeves. So my ribbing is done. <laughs> Seven centimeters of rib. Nearly there. All we need to do now is cast off. Um, and I like to do an invisible cast off. If you just want to cast off rib wise, that's completely fine. It's a lot quicker and a lot easier. Um, but I'll give you a quick tutorial on how to do an invisible cast off. I'm not the best at it. There's probably loads better tutorials out there, but I'll just show you what you need to do. Um, you need to leave a really long, <laughs> leave a really long strand of yarn and get your darning needle and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're at our centre back marker. Um, that's where we finish the rib round. And really to do an invisible rib cast off, it's um it's just four moves. So starting with a knit stitch as the first stitch on the needle. And the first move is to come behind uh, in between the first and the second stitch, and then you're gonna go knitwise into this second stitch, the pearl stitch. Later on, I'm gonna Cut off the end. This is just bigger than my Knitwise. Right now. This first stitch. Pull it nice and tight and then slide it off the needle. And now we're going to do the same thing, just purling. So you'll go purl wise through the second stitch on the needle. Nice and tight. Pull all the yarn through. Purl wise through the first stitch. There's so much yarn to pull through and then pull that stitch off. So then we start again. There's a knit stitch. So we do the knitting. So you come through, through the middle and then knit wise through this stitch. Knit wise through the first stitch again. and that one comes off, pull everything tight, and then we can do purl wise again, so purl wise through the second stitch. Oh, there we go, purl wise through the first stitch. You can see how we get a nice rhythm going now. Pull that one off, and then we start knit wise again, so through the middle. So when you are living in this area, you have to leave it like you cannot take yourself to a higher level. Even me as I was a kid, I used to play in this mud. Most of the... Uh, Knitwise through that second stitch. Knitwise through the first stitch. And... Oh. Oh dear, got my tail a bit caught, that's okay. That's good. <laughs> and then off. 
So you can see how it leaves this lovely invisible kind of, um, it all fades into the rib edge, um, which I really like. It's really. Really worth just taking that little bit of extra time to get your cast off looking good um and yeah we just need to complete all the way around this round and then we can start on the sleeves the body will be completely done so we've cast off um we've got a lovely invisibly cast off edge and that means the body panel is finished completely and we can move now on to working on these sleeves that we put on the thread a while back um so i'm going to show you how to pick up all these stitches pick up stitches in the underarm and then you've got a uh, an amount of stitches that you can work on in the round to create your sleeve. So we're working back on our six mil needles again, or the needles you've been using to get the correct tension for your stocking stitch. And we're just gonna start these threads. I've got the right hand sleeve here, but it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna take all of these stitches straight off the thread and onto the needle. Don't need to do anything fancy. It's just sort of squishing them all on. <laughs> and if you're anything like me start getting excited at this point because um it's like halfway through we're nearly done we've just got the sleeves to do and you can really see how the jumper's coming together how all the colors are working together and sort of what the fit's going to be like how it's going to look it's like a really exciting stage mm, nearly picked up all of these drop the camera. <laughs> uh, just the last few ones to go. Okay, and now we get to do the lovely satisfying thing of just, oh, last little one. Oops, on the end there. <laughs> Oh my gosh, can't get it. <laughs> Come on, I can see you hiding in there. Okay, there we go. No stitch left behind. <laughs> um, now you get to see the lovely satisfying thing. You get to pull your thread all the way out. Now that those stitches are on the needle. Oh yeah, nice. And then what we're gonna do, we now need to pick up the stitches along this under, under sleeve area where we cast on stitches on the body. Um, so we're going to take some new yarn. I've already tied a slip knot in here. And we're just going to pick up stitches. It's um, a different number of stitches for each size, so double check what you've got for your size. And we're just going to pick them up. You can see here, just in the, in the knit stitches. So there's little loops between each stitch, and that's where we're going to aim for. And we're going to put our needle. So starting with this starting with the slip stitch so needle in there there should be one two threads so go under the second one needle in 
pop our slip stitch on and just tighten it up a little bit. There we go. And then we pull it out. And that's our first stitch. And then into the second one. Again, make sure you're going into the second under the second bit of yarn. Second stitch. And going in again. Yarn round and pull it back through. One more time. In there. Yarn round. Fill it back. And the last one I'll show you. There we go. And then you're just going to do that and pick up stitches for your size all the way until you get to the end here. And then you'll have your, your stitches to work on for the sleeve. And here we are. I've picked up all my stitches. We formed one big round all the way around the sleeve and on this underarm section. And you can just continue knitting now all the way around these stitches, knitting every stitch um, until you get to the length um, stated in the pattern for your size. Um, and I'll meet you there. <laughs> So I've had a chance to knit a little bit of the sleeve now um, and I'll just show you how to measure it because we're going to measure the length of the sleeve from the underarm area. Um, so yeah, not measuring it from the side neck or anywhere else. You just measure your sleeve progress from the underarm stitches that you cast on. So obviously you lay it down properly on a flat surface, but yeah, you can just measure from, from here to see how long your sleeve is. So I may have got a bit bored last night and finished off that sleeve while it was too dark to film. Um, but I've come to the end of the stocking stitch part of the second sleeve. So I'll just show you how we finish off the last couple of steps of this jumper, which is the decrease round for the cuff and then working the cuff in rib. So for the decrease round, um, it might help you to put in a stitch marker just to keep track of where we started and where we ended. And we're just working the decrease round, sort of starting at the middle of the underarm section that we cast on. So just so the start of the round is sort of um, on the underside of the wrist where you can't see it. Um, and then we're just going to knit two together, knit one, and then we're going to repeat that all the way around until we get back to the stitch marker. So knit two together, knit one, knit two together, knit one, and then that will decrease for our sleeve. So yeah, just keep repeating, knit two together, knit one, all the way around until you're back at the start. Okay, so deca decrease round done, uh, back in the stitch marker, and now we can just start working with our rib for the cuff. So this is the final step before we finish the jumper. Um, 4.5 mil needles again, or whichever needles you've been using for your rib. And right, we're just going to take the stitches off yeah. the six mil needles and oh, just working our one by one rib again. And then we're going to work uh, seven centimeters of rib for the cuffs. And then we can do our cast off. Okay. And knit one, purl one for this rib. Okay. And I'll leave you to it and meet you when we've finished our seven centimeters of rib for the cuff. Okay, I've finished the cuff. We've got seven centimeters of rib. We're ready to do the final stage of the jumper, which is just casting off our cuff now, uh, which is super exciting. So yeah, get your darning needle ready and leave a really nice long tail of yarn to cast off with. And I'll show you how to do it. So I'm just going to show you how to do the invisible cast off, just like we did with the hem. Um, of course, if you don't want to do that, if you just want to cast off rib wise and just, um, you know, leave it like that, that's absolutely fine. But I think it's worth taking the extra time to do a nice, a nice invisible cast off. You know, it's worth it if you're taking all the time to knit something. Um, so yeah, I've been working the cuff in a magic loop. So I'm just going to pull the back needle out. Um, and yeah, we're starting with a knit stitch here. So that means we start with the, the knit motions. Oh, okay. So yeah, go through the the back, knit through the second stitch. Oh gosh, I'm getting all caught up in my needles. <laughs> and then we can knit through this first stitch. And pull it off. Now we do the purl motions, so purl wise through the second stitch. Pull the yarn nice and tight, and we can go purl wise through the first stitch. Was it a situation? it nice and tight again <clears throat> and then we start again and we do knit wise so knit wise through the second stitch knit wise through the first <coughs> stitch right. now you can already see that nice invisible ending 
and right. then we're going to do pearl ones. So you can always tell if you ever get lost and you can't remember which part you're supposed to be doing. If there's a pearl stitch, so this is the pearl part of the rib, then you do the, the pearl, pearl movements. So pearl through the second stitch and pearl through the first stitch. And then I started. And if there's a knit stitch first on the needle, this is the knit stitch, then you do the, the knit movements. So knitting through that second so stitch on the needle and knit through the first. The to give you a start. Oh my gosh, how exciting. This is the very Aggie. final stage of the jumper and then we're all done. So now you're in a nice rhythm with your cast off. You can just keep going until you're completely done and then i'll show you how to finish off the jumper we're just gonna sew in and cut off any loose ends um and then it's gonna be ready to block and wear which is so exciting <laughs> Here we go. Um, this is the first look at the final finished job. Yeah. It's so exciting. Um, all the all the ends are cast off. Um, it's looking so gorgeous. I love it. Um, so happy with how this one came out. So all we need to do now is uh, flip it inside out and chop off those ends. Or you know, if you want to, if it bothers you to have the knots, um, you can just sew them in. Just take a little bit longer though. Um, so you can see where I've already done this on the body panel. I've uh, cut off the ends. You can see the little knots. So if you feel like that is going to be a problem for you, oh, it's really fine if you want to oh, well, sew them in. Um, and you can see I still need to do that on the sleeves. So all I do is I'll just take the ends, snip them off about you know half a centimetre, um, make sure everything's secure. If there's anything loose, you know, just tie it up. Um, and then it's ready to block. Or if you're too excited, it's ready to wear straight away. <laughs> So here it is, the first time I'm trying it on. Absolutely in love with it. Oh, so gorgeous. I, I love the way the sleeves fit. I love that it's slightly cropped. Oh. Um, and the colours are amazing. Um, so I hope you all have so much fun knitting this pattern. Um, please tag me in your finished pictures. Um, I can't wait to see them all. And Goodbye, guys. I'll see you soon. Dad will always. Thanks for watching.